Hi everyone. I'm going to continue today with uh, the subject of WIA and I'm going to look at a second function which is to rotate images. So yesterday we looked at how we could uh, scale or resize an image. Today we're going to look at how we can rotate it. Once again, like usual, I do have an article on the subject. I do have a sample code that you can take and use or inspire yourself to create your own variation on thereof. And I goes over everything, has links to the documentation if you want to look into it further. And that's what we're going to explore today. So we have the exact same setup as I did for the resize and scaling images demo. Um, we have a folder with two subfolders, a folder with original images that we're going to use to manipulate. And then we have a subfolder called updated where I'm going to save what we do. That way I never overwrite the originals. That way we can keep doing demonstrations and playing around with code. And then I have the database itself. And the database itself, you're familiar with it. I'm slowly adding modules as we go along. So today I added the rotate module. And it, all it is is I copy and pasted the function from the website. Now, the function itself is very simple. And as you can see, it takes three input arguments. And they're explained up above, as I always do. So you have the initial image, so fully qualified path file name with the extension of the original image to rotate. So what image do you want to manipulate? Then you have the rotation angle. And lastly, you have the output image. So where do you want it saved? So the modified version of the image. And we have to pay attention to a couple particularities here. The rotation angle, as you see here, accepts values of 90, 180, 270. And that's it. Don't exceed those numbers and don't try numbers in between. Uh, you want to rotate by 15 degrees? Well, it seems that WIA doesn't support this. And the output image is optional. If you don't include it, you omit it, then it's going to overwrite the original image. So be careful. If you include it, then it's going to create a new image file with the path and file name that you attribute to it. And then we can look at the code itself. The code is very straightforward. In this case, we are using conditional compilation to decide if we're using early or late binding. If we set it to true, then we're doing early binding. And if we're set it to false, like it is now, then we're using late binding. One important thing to note is early binding requires a reference to the Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library. So what does that mean? That means if here I want to switch into early binding for coding, well, then I also have to come up here and find the Microsoft Windows. We'll get there. Oops. Microsoft Windows Image Acquisition Library, in my case 2.0, and I just check it off. And the benefit of the early binding, as we all know, is we have IntelliSense. So when I come here, WIA, I can then get all of my IntelliSense available to me to work with. If we switch to late binding, well, in that case, we don't need the reference, so we can uncheck that guy. We don't need it anymore. But now we don't have IntelliSense. The code works just fine. And it's actually preferable in production environments to use late binding because then you don't have versioning issues with your references. And it automatically knows, because of this, whether it's using this block of code or if it's using this block of code, which is late binding here. Early binding is up here. And as you can see, we declare the variables differently and we set them differently. When you're using late binding, you use create object. When you use early binding, you use the new and then whatever it is you're going after. With that out of the way, so you can choose if you want to use early or late binding, then we set up a variable for an image file and for an image process, because we're going to manipulate it. And then we just create our filter, which is going to be a rotate or a flip. In this case, it's rotate. And then the property we're after is a rotation angle. And that's where we're going to supply the rotation angle from our input arguments. 
And then <clears throat> we load our initial image. We apply right here the image process that we define. So we apply the rotation. And then we come through here and we save it. And that's it. It's that simple. It really isn't hard. So we can look at a concrete example of how this works. So we'll just use the image rotate function. We're going to take our initial original image kid, JPEG, and we're going to rotate it by 180 degrees. And then we're going to save it out to our updated folder. And we're going to run it. And we already got back true. If we open up our folder, we look at our original kid, as you can see. Okay, it's uh, properly oriented. Everything's good. If we go to our updated image now, it has been rotated 180 degrees. You could do instead a 90 degree and run it. And now if we come in our updated, you'll see it's only rotated by 90 degrees. We can prove what I was saying about there being an issue with any arbitrary value. We could say we only wanted to rotate it by 30 degrees, for instance, and you'll see it errors. We get an automation error. So that's just keep that in mind. It's good only for rotating in 90 degree increments. Um, and if we really wanted to, just to prove that the function does work properly, we could take, here, we we'll go back here. I was going to work with the original. We don't need to. We can work with the update kid version. We'll take the kid. And we'll rotate it by another 90 degrees. Currently, it's rotated at 90 degrees. Right? If we look here, it's rotated. So we're going to rotate another 90 degrees. And if we do that, we're not supplying... Remember, we're not supplying the output image. And what does it say? If omitted, it overwrites the original file. So it's going to overwrite this updated image. If we run it, it's true. It ran successfully. And as you can see, it's flipped. And now it's done another 90 degrees. Also, just to point out, it does not accept negative values. So if we want to do negative 90 degrees to bring it back around, it will not work. You get an error. So in this case, if you wanted to do a negative 90 to bring it back, we'd do 270 instead. And then we'd be back to where we were. So the orientation, the degrees always has to be on the positive. So that's why I put here the only acceptable values are 90, 180, and 270. That's it. But as long as you can live with those constraints, you're only having to do those types of rotations. WIA is extremely efficient and fast, as you can see, to do it. If you need to get into other arbitrary angles of rotations, then we need to turn towards other techniques. Um, I have some on my website and probably do a video on some of those at a later date. But uh, that will wrap it up for WIA rotation. As you can see, it really is very simple. It's only a question of defining a rotation filter and then applying it to the loaded file, our initial file, and then taking that rotated image here, the IF, and saving it. And depending on if we've omitted the output image, we're overwriting. Otherwise, we're creating a new file. But that's it. Well, hopefully this is uh, helpful and taught you something new answered a few questions and hopefully you can see a little bit about the value use of WIA. Um, it is a, a nifty little library and can open a lot of uh, doors for simple image manipulations without having to get into all sorts of DLLs and external third-party uh, applications. It's there, it's available, why not use it if all you need to do is rotate by 90 degree increments. Thank you for taking your time spending a couple minutes with me today. Like, subscribe if there's any way you can promote my channel, my videos in any manner. It's greatly appreciated as always. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.